Das Radikal. This is Reykjavik. It is the capital of Iceland. And with a population of 123,000 people, it is the northernmost capital city of any sovereign country on this planet. The history of Reykjavik dates back more than 1,100 years. In the year 871, Ingolver Arnarsson arrived from Norway and, and settled down in what is today the Reykjavik city center. Ingolver was the first man that is known to have uh, permanently settled in Iceland. Thus he is often regarded as the first Icelander and the father of the nation. Today a statue of Ingolver sits on top of Arnarhot in downtown Reykjavik and he is surrounded by various government buildings like the Supreme Court of Iceland, the Administration House, Ministries of Finance, Education, Transportation and to his right is the Central Bank of Iceland. So, knowing this, the fact that Reykjavik was the first place to be permanently settled by humans and the fact that uh, it is today the capital city of Iceland, one would assume that it was always Reykjavik's destiny to one day be, become the capital city that we know it as today. But, that is actually not true. You see, the fact that it was the first place to be permanently settled and that it is today the capital, these two things are merely a coincidence. For most of Icelandic history, there was actually nothing about Reykjavik that suggested it would ever become the capital. And in this video, I'm going to try to explain the history of Reykjavik and how exactly it ended up becoming Iceland's capital. When Ingolver Arnarsson first arrived in Reykjavik, it, it had uh, three main qualities which he was uh, apparently very impressed with. A. The water in the bay was apparently very calm, making it easy for ships to land. Also, it provided access to rich fishing grounds and there was access to warm water in the nearby hot springs in Laugardalur. Reykjavik, by the way, means steamy bay or smoky bay, most likely in reference from the steam being permitted in, uh, from the hot springs in Laugardalur, Laugardalur meaning pool valley. So, Ingolur Arnarsson arrives in 871 and over the next few decades uh, hundreds and thousands of more settlers would arrive from all over Scandinavia eventually settling most of, most of the lowlands of Iceland. And in the year 930, the first Icelandic parliament, the Althingi, also the name of our current legislature, was established at what is today Thingvellir. So, does that mean that Thingvellir were, was the first capital of Iceland? Well, no. You see, uh, for most of the year there was nothing at Thingvellir. It was only the place where people met uh, during the assembly and, uh, m and most of the representatives and uh, people who went to it just stayed in tents. So there was no infrastructure there that you one could have classified as, uh, uh, you know, a capital of any sorts. Uh, with the Commonwealth of Iceland uh, lacking any uh, urbanization and with its uh, power structure being very decentralized, there was uh, for most of its history no one place in the entire country that was considered to be more important than others. However, this would change a little bit with the adoption of Christianity in the year 1000. Uh, from the beginning of the 12th century and until the end of the 18th century, Iceland had two episcopal sees. Uh, episcopal see. I don't know. If, I don't know how that is pronounced. Uh, you know, it's a place where a bishop lives, and there's like an important church. I don't know. Ask your local minister. But anyway. Iceland had two of these, well, bishop seats, and uh, they were, and um, they eventually evolved into becoming important trading hubs as well as centers uh, of education for the land. And some scholars have even cited that uh, Skálholt may have been, may be con at least considered as Iceland's de facto capital until the ascension of Reykjavik. Now, as uh, Iceland became a part of the Kalmar Union in uh, 1397. 
the power of Hola and uh, Skálholt uh, continuously grew and grew, whereas the power of the Icelandic legislator, the Althingi, started to diminish. However, in terms of uh, uh, population or urbanization, uh, one has to say that neither Skálholt or nor Hola never grew much past that of having yeah, a large church surrounded by a tiny village. In the time period between uh, the Icelandic Commonwealth and until about uh, the 19th century, there were only very few Icelandic villages or settlements to even speak of, and very few of them had uh, populations of more than a few dozen people. One of the largest settlements in this period was probably the one in Vestmanaer, and uh, the fishing village of Rif had a uh, had, uh, during the high fishing season at least, had a population of almost 500 people, which uh, back then must have been astounding. But it should be noted that Rif was a seasonal fishing village, so during the non-fishing season months, there were only a few dozen souls living there most likely. There were other seasonal fishing towns like that in Iceland, but Rif may have been the largest one. Okay, by now you must be thinking, what about the Danish royal authority over Iceland? Surely, surely they must have had a place of their own in Iceland to govern from, or something like that. A de facto Icelandic capital, maybe? Well, well technically speaking, of course, uh, during this period, the Kalmar Union and until uh, we, we gained sovereignty in 1918, the Danish capital of Copenhagen, or Kaupmannahöfn, as we call it in Iceland, Icelandic, uh, what's it in Danish? Uh, Copenhagen, I think? Anyway, Kaupmannahöfn was, well, technically the capital city of Iceland, so just keeping that real. However, as far as the Danish highest authority in Iceland is concerned, well, the highest uh, authority at in this time period for the most for most of the time was the Amtmaður or Amtman, and he resided in Bessastaðir, which is today home of the president of Iceland. However, Bessastaðir, as you may notice on these photos, is neither a t neither a town or village or anything. It's more of a country estate, a royal country estate. And it is located um, in Altanes, uh, of several kilometers, uh, or s uh, several dozen kilometers, depending if you uh, mean by road or air, outside of Reykjavik. However, it is Bessastaðir that is the crucial um, reason why Reykjavik eventually became Iceland's capital. Had nothing to do with uh, con being conveniently located or the fact that Ingolver Arnarsson settled here first. It's Bessastaðir. Bessastaðir is the key to Reykjavik's ascension. Let me explain. As mentioned before, throughout most of history, Reykjavik was, well, pretty much still just a single farm named Reykjavik, and the farm was for the most part located. Uh, on the northwestern bank of the lake, uh, Tjörnin, which is uh, on close to the northern side of the Reykjavik Peninsula. Reykjavik wasn't even an important trading harbor for uh, a long time, uh, because uh, after the uh, uh, re uh, Protestant Reformation, or perhaps even sooner, uh, the most important trading, hub in the, uh, trading harbor in the area was uh, Hapnafjörður which is uh, to the south of Reykjavik, and is today a uh, town with a population of just under 30,000. During the 18th century, European countries started to invest heavily in uh, new innovative business practices that relied on mechanization and uh, organization in order to produce necessities more efficiently. Today we call these type of business ventures industry, and although it took a very long time for industry to have a significant impact on the Icelandic economy and way of life, the first signs of industry started, started to pop up in Iceland during the 1750s. Around this time, the king of Denmark and Iceland, Frederick V, 
gave grants to several Icelandic entrepreneurs in order to create Iceland's first shareholder company. The company was given the name Inrettingarnar and uh, it dealt, among other things, in uh, wool production, shipbuilding and testing out new innovative farming techniques. Um, However, for the sake of this video, uh, the most important fact is that the company itself was uh, located on the old Reykjavik farm. You see, the Reykjavik farm, uh, which is of course located quite close to uh, ba the Bessastadir royal estate, had been purchased by, the, by Bessastadir in uh, the century, in decades or centuries before. In fact, most of the lands surround, surrounding Pesas uh, uh, that had at one time or another been purchased uh, by the royal estate, and Reykjavik was simply considered to be the most convenient location to build up this new company. And because Indriyatingadnar obviously needed, well, manpower, a small village started to appear on the grounds uh, surrounding the company on the Reykjavik farm. And uh, pretty soon Reykjavik became a kind of a Danish pet project in order to try and thrust Reykjavik or, well, Iceland into the modern era. And in 1759 King Frederick V also ordered that a new prison to be built in Reykjavik. Previously, all Icelandic convicts had to be transferred to Copenhagen in order to serve their time. The new prison was uh, finished in 1771 and it still stands today. You may know this building as uh, Stjórnarráð Íslands, or the administration building. By this time, the late uh, 18th century, the Danish authority over Iceland had started to show great interest in uh, perhaps uh, trying to transform Reykjavik into a proper Icelandic capital. However, despite having Indriyatingadnar and the new prison, the town was only growing very slowly and the most important trading harbour in the area still remained at Hapnafjordur and uh, there was practically still no need for there to be another harbour in Reykjavik. Then, in 1783, a disaster struck Iceland. A massive volcanic eruption started near Skaftá in southern Iceland. Over 10 million tons of sulfur dioxide were released into the atmosphere, eventually resulting in catastrophic harvest failures all over the world. I could actually make an entire video on that topic alone, just the global effects and the effects here in Iceland, and I'm sure there are videos about, there, about that uh, somewhere on YouTube. But for the sake of the story of Reykjavik, let's just note that half of Iceland's livestock died out as a result of poison gases and the ass fallout from the uh, eruption, and this resulted in mass starvation and, uh, and uh, somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of the entire population, roughly 10 to 13,000 people in Iceland, died. The survivors now had to face life in a country whose agriculture had been almost thoroughly decimated by the eruption. This resulted in a lot of Icelanders moving to the country's very few existing villages in order to uh, quit farming and work, for example, in fishing, in the, in, in fishing or uh, whatever ever other employment they could find. The Danish crown also relaxed some of its uh, trade restrictions on Iceland, making it easier for Icelanders to buy whatever necessities they needed from other countries, and those there was a lot that was needed. And, as a result of that, the population of Reykjavik started to, well, grow. And thus, in 1786, uh, the Crown of Denmark officially granted Reykjavik the rights of a, well, official trading harbour. And thus, uh, the 200-year anniversary of Reykjavik was celebrated in 1986. And in the year 1800, King Christian VII of Denmark ordered that the Althingi, which had been Iceland's parliament for centuries, but by now was reduced to being basically Iceland's uh, supreme court, be disbanded. Instead of the Althingi, he ordered that a new supreme court be erected in Reykjavik, and that uh, 
court was given the name Lands Eviriatur. It started working on uh, August 10th, 1801, and its first chief justice was Magnus Stephensen. Urbanization was now finally starting to slowly take hold in Icelandic society during the 19th century. Around the middle of the 19th century, there were several towns that had reached populations of several hundred people. Uh, among them were uh, Olafsvík, Stikkisolmur, Isafjörður, Akureyri, Siglufjörður, and Vestmanejar, which I've mentioned before, and Keplavík and Hapnafjörður, and of course Reykjavík. However, by the end of the 19th century, Reykjavík had outgrown all of the other towns, and in the year 1900, uh, the population of Reykjavík had reached just around 8,000 people, an entire 10% of the entire Icelandic population of the time. Also during the 19th century, nationalism started to blossom in Iceland, just like uh, everywhere else in the world at that time. And uh, in 1850, uh, 1845, excuse me, uh, King Christian VIII of Denmark ordered that the Althingi be restored. However, it was to serve only as a civilian advisory board to the Danish authority in Iceland, and at this time the highest authority of Iceland remained the Amtmadr. Jan Sigurdsson, who was uh, leader of the Icelandic independence movement, he wanted uh, the Althingi to be erected where it had always been, at Thingvellir. However, the king and his court wanted it to be erected in Reykjavik, well, obviously. And, of course, the king had his way on the matter. And with Reykjavik being selected as the, well, uh, hometown of the Icelandic parliament, with, uh, well, that is, although it was not the parliament, the official parliament yet, it, it's, it was still probably the decision that eventually fully cemented Reykjavik as the official capital city of Iceland. Currently, the Icelandic parliament resides in the Althingishus, uh, the Althingi House, which is located just a few hundred meters where the original Reykjavik farm was back in the day. And uh, the original and the current house was built in the year 1881. And on February 1st, 1904, limited home rule was granted to, to Iceland. And uh, when Hannes Hafsting became the first minister of Iceland, which is a title, a, a precursor to the current title of prime minister, he was, he was given the administration house uh, in order to set up his cabinet. And the administration house has served that purpose ever since, going from prison all the way to... Uh, cabinet seat of uh, the Icelandic Prime Minister. And with home rule established, one can truly talk about Reykjavik as Iceland's capital city. Now, of course, technically uh, Copenhagen would remain Iceland's uh, de facto capital until 1918, but eh, details. So this was just a video to explain the history of Reykjavik and how Reykjavik became the capital city of Iceland. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Das